Alright, today I'm going to show you how to make rocket igniters, or at least the way I make them. Uh, things you're going to need. The first thing is wire. I like this wire because it has two wires strung together, which makes it a lot easier. Uh, next thing you're going to need is some thin nichrome wire, or you can use uh, thin copper wire, but I prefer this because it stays hot longer before it melts. Uh, the next thing is some sort of pyrogen or pyrotechnic mixture. This is black powder. I made it myself, so you can probably make that too. Um, then you'll need titanium. I use our titanium sponge. I use this to make hotter sparks that ignite the rocket fuel better. Uh, next thing you'll need is a soldering iron. Uh, solder. This is rosin core, so it works nicely. Uh, for tools, you will need uh, wire cutters or strippers. Um, you could make a scissors work too if you wanted to, but I prefer this. And a small piece of paper towel. This will wrap everything up. Glue of some sort to tie the thread that holds everything together. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is take your wire. and cut a chunk that's the length that you want it to be. So here I'm going to cut this probably a little over a foot. Next thing you want to do is separate the ends. And strip these. These will be the ends that will hook on to the alligator clips. And on the other side, it's going to be a little bit different. You want to split them and then peel one down about that far and trim it off. Then you want to strip both of these down just a little ways. Uh, just about like that. I don't know if you can see that. There. Then what you want to do is take your nichrome wire or thin copper wire or whatever it is that you have and spiral it around the lower one. This makes it a lot easier. Okay, so I spun it around the bottom one. I don't know if you can see this because it's very fine wire. And then you want to solder this on. Now once you think you've got it soldered on, give it a good tug to make sure it's not going to come off. And then go ahead and wrap your wire all the way around the other part, just a few times. Now these are high current igniters since the wire length is longer, so you don't want to use small batteries. This is for like on, the gr on ground ignition, not in the air, parachute deployment or anything. And then you want to solder this top one on. And cut it off. Now the soldering iron, we don't need that anymore. Next thing you want to do is take the small piece of paper towel that you have and see if you can split it. This will give a thin layer just to hold the black powder and titanium together but not so much that the flames can't come out. Now you want to put that down there. Put your igniter on it. Now this piece might be a little bit too big. Now put your igniter on that. Take a little bit of black powder and sprinkle it around. There you go. doesn't want to sit where it's supposed to. Now that the black powder is down, I'd like to put a little bit of titanium and now this makes the flames burn or the sparks burn a little hotter and it causes it to ignite a lot easy, easier. 
Uh, now that that's down, you want to wrap this up. Now as tight as possible because otherwise it doesn't want to fit inside a rocket motor. Now that that's wrapped around, I probably still have too much paper towel on there. You end up with something about like that. From here you want to take your thread. I'm using the Kevlar thread, but it really doesn't matter. Make it into a slip knot just to get it started. Put this around your igniter and wrap it tightly. Now that it is like that, you want to take the PVC cement or whatever glue you're using. I can get it open. And just put a tiny bit on the thread and the wire so that it stays there. It stinks. Cut the thread off and let it dry. Well, once it stays where it's supposed to. And that is your rocket igniter. It's not very pretty, but it works very well. Now when it comes to an ignition system, you don't have to be very complicated. Firing one of these igniters is as simple as attaching it to a car battery. But if you want something that is more reliable, I would recommend making something similar to this system that I have here. Now if you're not confident in your wiring capabilities, uh, you could probably just buy one or make it yourself. Uh, making it yourself is a lot cheaper and can actually be kind of fun if you know what you're doing. I put this together with some parts that I bought and a waterproof case that I had laying around. I have a wall socket mounted in here. Uh, this makes it a lot more convenient because I can hook uh, an extension cord directly into this. And then on the other end, I have a plug with some alligator clips wired into it, and I can hook these directly to the igniter. Uh, another thing that I have on here, I have the wire running out and I attach that to a car battery, but, well, this is a car battery charger. And I have a couple more things that I made for this. I have a continuity tester which can make sure that the igniter is going to work or that uh, all the wires are hooked up and I shouldn't have any problems. Um, I'll show you here if I hook these together and select this igniter when I press this the green light will come on. That shows that these are connected. Now if I disconnect these it gives me two lights. Now these lights show two things. They show that the igniter is either working or not and it shows that if I have power or not. Now once I decide that I have continuity and I'm ready to fire, I press this button. Now when I press this, the red button comes on which shows that I have power going to the igniter and you can see that I have power because it sparks. And that's about it. for. Now we'll go ahead and attach the igniter and see how it works. Okay, I have the igniter all wired up and ready to go. You can see I have the alligator clips hooked up to the wires down here and it looks like they're touching but they're really not, so this will work. Alright, now here we go. Flip the switch, check continuity, we're good. Three, two, one. Now that is what would be inside your rocket motor and that would light the fuel very nicely. Those sparks are very hot and ever since I've started using them I've never had a problem with an igniter not working. So uh, there you have it. That's an electric igniter for you. Thanks for watching.